The stage is set for the top 18 collegiate teams and the battlefield, which is the Enderon College's gym in Zagig, is ready as we open today the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup Season 3. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Coach Chris King de la Cruz. And with me at the panel is the newest member of our broadcast team, Coach Russell Ripon. Good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon, Coach Chris. Uh, it's a great day for basketball. Great, Great day, day for, for basketball. basketball as we open this biggest summer tournament for college and university teams. And let me just remind everyone that we are live through our social media uh, platforms, YouTube and Facebook, and over at Aliro 23, completo na ang channel mo. And we have two games today, Coach. First game is between the University of the Philippines, Fighting Maroons versus the reigning NCAA champions, the San Beda Red Lions. And later at 2.30 p.m., we have the FEU Tamaraus, which will be bannered by their new coach, Coach Sean Chambers, will be against the LPU Pirates. So let's discuss first, Coach, the tournament that uh, we have today, the participating teams and the brackets that we have. So we have 18 teams participating, including De La Salle University, Adamson Falcons, University of the Philippines, Fighting Maroons, FEU, Tamaraus, NU Bulldogs, UE Warriors, Mapua Cardinals, the San Beda Red Lions, LPU Pirates, University of Perpetual Help, Altas, and Enderon Colleges, Guangbing Colleges, Our Lady of Fatima University, we have Coleo de San Juan de Letran, Diliman College, Ateneo de Manila University, MCU, and the San Sebastian College or uh, Stags. It's quite a lineup. Quite a lineup. It's one of the strongest that we would see here and one of the most exciting that we would have this summer, Coach. Then Absolutely. Let's, let's discuss the the bracketing, we have the group edge, which will have a UP, UE, Diliman College, Our Lady of Fatima, Adamson, University of El Preto, Help Altas, San Beda, and San Sebastian, and the rivals, Coleo de San Juan de Letran. While in the group prime, we have the following teams, De La Salle University, NU Bulldogs, Ateneo de Manila University, Guangming College, LPU Pirates, FEU Tamaraus, Mapua Cardinals, MCU Sepremos, and Enderon Colleges Titans. So, this stack competition coach, yes. 18 teams, and let's discuss here the tournament format coach for sure, this Sure, sure. So, you know, this is the plan over three months, right? Three months of great competition. We're going to have two, uh, teams divided into two brackets. Uh, the top two teams in each bracket will advance to the quarterfinals with a twice to beat advantage. All right, so teams which finish in positions three through six will engage each other in a crossover play-in tournament. Uh, the three lowest ranked teams are eliminated, unfortunately. The semifinal and the final are both knockout games. So it's one game and done, right? So you gotta, you gotta really be focused in. Every game really counts here in the season three of the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup. And let's go over the socials here, what's happening around social media among the players. Some players are joking around, goofing around. And let's see here, uh, UP's main men, Joel Kagulangan, JD Kagulangan, joking about Terence Forte and not having been listed in the initial lineup. What, what can you say about these two players, JD Kagulangan and Terence Forte? their impact that they bring here? Well, they're stalwarts of the UP Fighting Maroons. I mean, those guys are uh, very attuned to Coach Gold's system and the way he wants to play. They provide veteran leadership. And so you're looking at a situation where you're really trying to uh, um, take this time to get to know the players and get to know your teammates. And uh, speaking of the University of the Philippines Fighting Maroons, let's take a look at the players to watch out for. Let's, we have Ray Remogat here. What can you say about this transfer here for UP? He's just a, another piece of the puzzle, another tool in the toolbox who has a very uh, uh, 
skilled game, can handle the ball, he can he can score, he can distribute, he can shoot. So it's just another piece to the mix to tr try to figure out how best to use him uh, when UAP season comes around. And then let's talk about the other side in Mindiola. San Beda Red Lions, we see here on our screen, so Ray Remogat warming up the first look of Ray Remogat in a UP Maroon uniform. There we go. And we have the players to watch out for here at the San Beda side. We have the Kalimag uh, brothers here. Uh, how can you more or less explain the impact of uh, the Kalimags for the San Beda Red Lions? Well, you know, they're, they've are they done their residency year, right? And now they're coming into the situation uh, with a team that already has a winning pedigree. Um, they've played at the highest level in the UAP. Uh, so they come in with... Um, with a, a good mix of experience, veteran uh, veteran experience, and they're uh, very smart players. They know how to play the Filipino game. They know how to uh, how to function, uh, you know, in these settings uh, against against the toughest competition. So they will definitely add uh, a measure of toughness and uh, and experience uh, for the Red Lions. These players have big shoes to fill in because they have lost Jacob Cortez to the LaSalle Green Archers in the off season and let's see how can they fare here against one of the strongest programs in the UAAP, the UP Fighting Maroons. We are ready, the stage is ready. Let's open this season three of the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup and let's turn it over to Alvin Tanyada, our venue announcer for the player call-ups. May we now request everyone to please rise and for those raised caps, please remove your caps for the singing of our Philippine National Anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
We are underway here for the first quarter. UP going with JD Kogulangan, John Felicidia, Sean Turkulas, Gani Stevens, and Francis Lopez, while UP going with uh, Joshua Tagala, Inigo Torres, Maynard Sonkuya, Jermaine Lasiones, and Kyle Hamora. Kagulangan now gives it in the middle to Torkulas. We have a foul here to open the ball game. Wow, it's only uh, 18 seconds into the game and we have our first foul, a little touch foul uh, while he's going up. Torkulas missing that first free throw. You see here, second free throw for Torkulas is good, giving them a one to zero lead. Kyle Hamora against the pressure is uh, pretty tight in the man-to-man. -man. Shot goes up. Tight defense there for UP. Ball will stay with San Beda with nine minutes, 27 seconds remaining here in our opening quarter. Hamora doing inbounding duties. Ooh. Danny Stevens telegraphing that pass. Tough pass. Sonkuya. Another tough pass. Torkulas. No good on that attempt for a slam at Jama Sonkuya. But he will be called for an offensive foul. Ball will go back to the hands of the Fighting Maroons. Nine minutes, seven seconds remaining. Number 19 took it in the chest. He establishes a uh, defensive position. Uh, it's so rare that you see an offensive foul in the Philippine, uh, uh, Philippine basketball. That was a, that was a nice uh, change of pace. Sacrificing your body in order to gain possession. Francis Lopez right. missing that open layup from that Kagulangan pass. That was a great backdoor cut. It's always tough when the ball gets in the middle of the paint. Torres short on the three-pointer. Probably needs a little more leg in his shot. A little short. A little short on that shot for Inigo Torres. I was joking on him because he was an inside operator before, but he was now a stretch forward for San Beda as Torres secures that board. Hamora now creating. Hamora turns around against around Kagulangan. Good. It's good from Kyle Hamora against JD Kagulangan to give San Beda the lead 2 to 1. Eight minutes, 13 seconds remaining. JD fires. That's good for JD Kagulangan. Jumper was pure. Stop Might and pop to... there for JD Kagulangan. One shot that he had perfected over the years. Correct. Inigo Torres. It looks like UP had been exploiting that 1-2-2 that, uh, two, two zone uh, with ball movement and uh, penetration to the middle of the paint. Shot clock is off now as Etulie had no time in putting that shot. Remember, as we talked to uh, Coach Andre uh, Santos earlier, this and bed that team is made up of uh, prospects that needed some exposure. Well, you know, you have to think about uh, this preseason setting. You're trying to establish good habits for your team and you're trying to um, uh, provide enough good experiences for your players so that they're ready uh, to face the competition in their home leagues. So uh, give them kudos for uh, you know, putting out a lineup that is uh, full of the developmental players so they can get a chance to, um, to play against great competition. Remember that this Unbeda team is also listed in participating in the PBA D-League where their main stays are playing. And it's a good thing that these upstarts are giving a chance. We have a timeout here, early timeout by San Beda. Seven minutes, 27 seconds remaining. UP leading 4-2. to two. We'll be right back. Managing a business becomes easier when you have the right set of tools for your business. And as the premier telecommunication company in the Philippines, 
you can rest assured that we can provide you with world-class and innovative tech solutions for your company, like acing that presentation with no lag with Eastern IDS, a dedicated business-grade internet tailor fit with high speeds and zero lag, or to handle your processing, storage, and networking needs with Eastern Cloud, which has a customized cloud platform that's fully scalable and flexible without limits. And by staying connected and protected with Eastern Cybersecurity, which helps keep your business safe from online threats. So why spend time waiting when you can spend it on building and managing your business? Let's make business more personal and achieve success together with the connection that knows you best. We are... First quarter, UP versus San Beda. Coach Russell, Coach Andre calling out an early timeout. What are your thoughts there in that adjustment? Well, I think he wants to be able to establish a, a rhythm for his team. And uh, you, you never want the lead to get away from you too much. So I think it's a good timeout and they scored off it. Just as Coach Russell said, that was a good timeout and said Etulie, even the score at four, speaking of said Etulie is a stretch big for Coach Andre Santos as JD Kagulangan scores on that elbow three to make it 7-4 now. San Beda missing on that corner three, but Inigo Torres will be called for a foul. The action's really moving now. Teams are getting up and down. They stay in their 1-2-2, uh, two, two, their 3-2 zone. For team foul now for San Beda, early on in this first quarter. UP now, Kagulangan, baseline, jumper, no good. Gani Stevens for the board, misses that putback. But we will be having a foul here. We're looking at a situation now where there is uh, quite the discrepancy uh, in fouls, and now um, now they're in the penalty. So and only Nick, six minutes, with only twenty seconds remaining. Early penalty situation for San Beda. Hamora gives it to Lesiones. Kagulangan butters it, but loses that ball. Possession will go back to San Beda. Red Lions with six minutes, nine seconds remaining. 16 seconds to shoot for the Red Lions. Great pressure and hustle for the ball. And that's what J.D. Kagulangan can bring on the table. Absolutely. Abadiano against Kyle Hamora now. Kyle Hamora spins. Etulie evading the defender. Corner three is good for San Beda Joshua Tagala to even the score at seven. UP would want to talk things over. We will have a timeout. We'll be back. By the Blazers. And we are back here's the first quarter of action five minutes 54 seconds remaining we're even at seven coach goldwin monteverde calling a timeout for the up fighting maroons coach russell what's going probably in the mind of coach gold in calling that timeout well i think you're looking at a situation where uh defensively the uh up allowed a paint touch ball uh, dribble penetration so they'll have to figure out a way to be able to cover uh when the ball gets kicked out to the corners you want you know that was uh an open uh, corner three you probably want to be able to contest that and put more pressure on the ball when the shot goes up good early adjustments being made here by coach goldwin monteverde 
let's see what the officials have to call here. We're midway here in the first quarter. Five minutes, 54 seconds remaining. Seven all. J.D. Kagulangan gives it to Abadiano. Corner three, Francis Lopez. No good cross court to J.D. Torculas. Francis Lopez. Ten seconds to shoot. Cross court to Abadiano. Gives five seconds to shoot. Abadiano, as he knows it. But... Good defense there for San Beda, forcing Abadiano to commit that traveling violation, turning over the ball to the San Beda Red Lions. They, uh, uh, the Red Lions did a really good job of flying to the ball, uh, being able to be there on the catch, which forced, uh, you know, forced turnover. The doors were really close in that offensive sequence for UP. Etulie against Torculas. Gives it to Gani Stevens inside, but there will be a foul called against Kevin Peregrina. There's a slight height disadvantage here against Ke Gani Stevens for Kevin Peregrina. He gives up around three to four inches. Tough matchup inside, coach. Absolutely. That's why you have to find different ways to be able to counter that. Uh, doing your work early defensively, being on the spot, being out there on the catch. Another corner three. No good on that possession for San Beda. Nice ball movement, though. Francis Lopez take it strong. No good. But there will be a foul called against a red shirt against that strong driving Francis Lopez. Francis Lopez, this young guy, might be the X factor for UP, for not only for this tournament, but in the coming UAAP season. He's tall. He's fast. That's inside outside touch. Yes. You know, I think it's uh, it's the reflection of their ability to get in transition very quickly. I mean, maybe that was one dribble and uh, Lopez was flying to the basket and cutting uh, and was uh, given a great pass and rewarded himself with free throws. And we must remember JD Kagulang and in uh, Francis Lopez were once teammates at the La Salle Green Hills program. They almost won the championship during uh, Kagulangan's last season there as we see Francis Lopez there, here. Waiting for UP, Torculas inside to Gani Stevens for the reverse layup. 11-7 to seven now is our score. Great inside-outside action. Gani Stevens, a transferee from the University of the East, strutting his wares for the Fighting Maroons now as JD Kagulangan was called for the Turishin foul against Lopez reaching for that steal. Four minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first. 11 to 7 is our score still in favor of the Fighting Maroons. Lopez now. Alji Alioso against Abadiano. 10 seconds to shoot. Peregrina for that screen. Peregrina extra pass to Etulia. No good. Francis Lopez transition now. Abadiano. Torculas, but he would be fouled. And San Beda is in the penalty. He will troop the line for two. Great offensive transition again. Shot was missed. Rebound, two passes, and the ball was already at the rim. So uh, San Beda will have to find another way to be able to counteract that, uh, be able to make sure the floor is balanced so that way they're, uh, it's a five-on-five five game as opposed to a man advantage for UP. San Beda's transition defense questionable right now as UP has been creating on fast break attempts mostly in this fourth quarter. Six-point lead now for the Fighting Maroons as Turkulas makes that two out of two on that trip to the line. Three minutes 52 seconds remaining in the first. Peregrina stops. Francis Lopez telegraphs the pass, but saves it on the wrong man. Mina. But shot is blocked. Peregrina second serving is good. Garu props that hustle for Peregrina as Abadiano. Corner three for UP is good. 16 to 9 now is our score. UP on top.
you know, we're looking at a situation where the action is picking up, and um, this is really good basketball being played right now. Both teams playing, trying to play to their strengths. Agulangan calming the troops. Three minutes, eight seconds remaining in the first. Screen by Torcolas. Torcolas now thought of the three. Ten seconds to shoot. Agulangan goes to his left, kicks it out. Abadiano thought about the tip. Torcolas. Three point shot, no good. Kani Stevens loading it over to get the letter. 10 seconds to shoot. Torculas forces it, no good. It looks like Sanbeda changed their strategy and now they're in a man to man defense, so it allows them to be uh, uh, direct, put direct pressure on the ball, which I think is a good thing. Talent for talent. That could be a disadvantage against them, as we see here on the fast break again, UP. Kagulangan, no good. That's short. Kani Stevens cutting. Loses the step out. Misses the shot. Gotta Alioso. Make, gotta make those uh, those easy ones. Kani Stevens, the biggest man on the floor right now, missing those gimmies. Two minutes, eight seconds remaining. Abadiano fouling Mina as there will be a platoon substitution here for the Fighting Maroons. Briones, Fortea, Belmonte, Raylan Torres, and their new uh, foreign student athlete, Kings Leododo, now win for Coach Goldwyn Monteverde. Still, they have the lead 16 to 9, two minutes. Six seconds remaining in this opening quarter. 14 to shoot for the Red Lions. Lopez inbounds. Gives it to Alioso. Throw about the three. It's an embarrassment of riches to have that many really good and solid players on your squad that you can uh, sub five in, five out. Udodo against Hawkins inside. Block. Second serving for Udodo. No good. Hawkins grabs the letter. One minute, 45 seconds in the first. Alioso to Peregrina. Pass telegraph here, Belmonte or Briones. And a good fast break finish for Raylan Torres. See the transition ba basketball here playing by UP on a high level, Coach Russell. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's made the difference in the game. They're able to really get defensive stops, finish possessions, and then get out and run. It's an easy game when you can make layups, easy layups. No good there for a three-pointer. Again, transition for UP. Ododo for the hoop. And the harm for Kingsley Ododo who flexes his muscle to make it 20 to 9. UP still up one minute, five seconds. Ododo troops the line for the extra free throw. You know, if you're able to rebound, I think in a lot of situations in basketball, you can be competitive in games if you can defensive rebound and you can get out and defend uh, def uh, in de defensive transition. If you you can win and lose one of those battles, if you lose both of those battles, it's tough to be competitive in the game. So that will be Tambeda's, um, that will be their uh, uh, task is to try to win one of those battles as the game goes forward. One battle at the time, Coach Raza for Coach Andre Santos as we have five seconds to shoot. Lopez for San Beda. Hits the front iron. Briones. He was fouled. Noel Briones Jr. is the son of a former pro player, Noel Briones. His, his dad was a legend in the 90s. Played for Spring Made in the PBL and Mobiline Bone Pals. So a good uh, Two and three player, his father. Let's see if uh, the son can emulate the antics, the skills of the dad. Well, you know, for a player that size, it's rare to see a guy that, like that that can actually put the ball on the floor and handle the break off of a rebound. So, you know, that's a, a luxury that Coach Gold has is to have a player like that. Plays the same position as his dad before. Oh, the size has an outside shooting. As we have here, San Beda creating Peregrina. Udodo caught that on top. 23 seconds for UP. Udodo inside. 
reverse it. 22-23 to 9 now for UB. 13 seconds remaining in our first quarter. Alioso kicks it out. Corner three is good. Five seconds remaining. Three. Peregrina. But San Beda will lose time as we close this first quarter. UP on top, 23 to 12. It is an exciting opening game for the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup. We'll be back in action for the second quarter. For UP, Odada for the hoop and the harm for Kingsley Odada who flexes his muscle. For the second quarter of action in this opening game of the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup, let's take a look at the lineup of uh, UP Fighting Maroons, Ernest Felicilda, JD Cagulangan, Jerry Badiano, Haru Dalarcon, Denzel Walker, Raylan Torres, Noel Briones Jr., Joshua Coronel, Sean Turculas, Mark Hill Belmonte, Seven Gagatek, Kingsley Ododo, Sean Stark Alter, Miguel Eniguez Gani, Steven L.A. Andres, and Terence Forte. Quite a lineup, Coach. It's uh, every position is covered. You have your ball handlers, you have your uh, guys who can defend, and you have size. It's, uh, it's a formidable lineup for sure. And with that formidable lineup at the hands of Coach Gold, it's the chemistry that you just have to work on. Yeah, you know what? I look at this team, and it looks like they really know how to play in, you know, in concert with each other. It, there's like no rust between the end of the UAP season and uh, April, April 6th. Uh, they look like they're just able to, they're just trying to fine tune things uh, and establish roles, which is a good thing to have as a, as a coach. You're not having to teach things uh, from scratch. And playing in this uh, tournament, the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup, will send a message to the rest of the field in the UAAP. As we saw there, a missed three-point attempt from Sonkuya. Torres. Ball screen action into a kick on the wing. Briones misses that jumper. Hamora against Torres. Hawkins inside, but loses the handle. Kicks it out. Lopez hits the front iron. Udodo secures the board. Cross-court pass. Three-pointer for UP, Terence Portea for three, making it 26 to 12 in favor of UP. Eight minutes, 41 seconds remaining. Transition threes, I mean, those are, uh, those are uh, a luxury to have if you can make them, and it just forces the defense to really have to scramble to find out how to stop you. You see, really, the resources of UP they can attack inside, they can attack outside, they can attack everywhere, actually. Yes. You know, it's uh, it's nice as a coach to be able to have a versatile lineup where you can play different styles. You can attack different um, uh, areas that your opponent may struggle in. So uh, right now, they're I think they're, again, trying to fine tune and figure out what those lineups could look like and where they can really make uh, make their most damage in terms of uh, being able to defend and get great shots. Hamora. Ball stolen by UP, but there will be a foul against Tervel. 
Alex Teruel, big guy for San Beda. I just got to say, I love what UP is doing on their ball screen uh, coverages. They are hedging hard and making the pass out of the ball screen very difficult. So that's why I think you have this lead where they're able to get in transition. In plain terms, stops. do we call that the hard show? Yeah, hard, yeah, hard, hard show, show, hard hedge. It's yeah. even a little bit of a trap going on there. Inside, Belmonte loses it for UP. Kyle Hamora starting the attack for the Red Lions. Goes all the way. Shot is too strong, Ododo. Secures the letter. Portea calming the troops for UP. Ododo will be called for the offensive foul with that uh, moving screen. You know, sometimes that is the ball handler's fault because basically when you're setting a ball screen, you have to make sure that the uh, screener's feet are set before you take the screen. So maybe he's a little bit impatient, but you know, it's, uh, it's something that you need to learn and have experience with. And I think he'll learn the lesson. The young, young listeners and viewers can learn a thing or two from you, Coach Russell, with that. Kyle Hamora, on the other hand, for San Beda, hitting that turnaround one-hand jumper. Seven minutes, ten seconds remaining in the second quarter. 26-14 in our score. 12-point lead for the Fighting Maroons. Briones inside, Wilmonte, Portea. Lines up for three. No good, Ododo. But he will be fouled underneath by Teruel holding on to Ododo on that uh, rebound battle. Well, that's sort of where you get into a situation where size uh, can be your advantage. Uh, if you're not doing your work early and able to push the, your assignment away from the basket, it's hard to get a rebound. There's one thing that I noticed, Coach Razel, that the, out of, uh, the, the art of box outing is, is, is die, quite, quite dying right now, especially for the young players. They would want to, to secure the letter immediately without box outing their, their opponent. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a lost skill, probably something that coaches need to get back to in terms of their training. Uh, and, you know, there's a progression. When you look at the shot going up, First, you're checking the, your, your matchup. If he's going to the basket, he or she's going to the basket. You want to make contact, and you want to ride them out the lane. Um, but you have to do that early and be, have, uh, physically be ready to do that. Noel Briones hit that corner three. Similarities with his dad, Noel Briones, senior on that play to make it 29-14 for UP. Hamora, four shot in the mid-range. San Beda is really having to work hard and on offense to get shots. They're having to shoot at over-contested uh, defenders. So it's hard to get a rhythm that way if you're having to always shoot against or play against a five-on-five defense. Against Kingsley Ododo, exploiting that match-up advantage. A UP with a steal. Torres finishing that layup. And Coach Andre Santos doesn't want what he was seeing. UP up 33 to 16. Five minutes, 38 seconds remaining. We'll be back. And the oncologist, the official venue partner of Pinoy Legal Club. Having a chocolate chip cookies, smart sports. Slip. Pinoy Liga in the second quarter. UP leading big. And we have now the much awaited debut in the UP uniform of Ray Remogat playing for the Fighting Maroons. 
what can they bring to the table here for UP Coach Russell? You know, I think he's a very savvy player. He uh, He's played at a high level already. Uh, and playing on this team, he has a lot to prove. And, he you know, you're, you're in a position where you have to compete for minutes because there's a lot of great guards on UP's team. So I think he's going to come uh, to this situation with the edge, uh, trying to uh, make a make a case for him being in the in the lineup, uh, you know, uh, as a part as a rotation player. So there, the last play, seven Gagate, fouling Son Kuya Riri Mogat, as I've heard, is being uh, mentored by JD Kagulangan. Very unselfish move for JD, but as, as he more or less sees the future for UP preparing the future for Ray Remogat here. Sonkuya misses that free throw trip. 33 to 16. Still our count. 5 minutes 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Abadiano. Good from the elbow. 20 point lead now being enjoyed by the Fighting Maroons. 36 to 16, five minutes remaining. Second quarter, four shot there for Mina. Ray Remogat. Back to him. He's not forcing anything. He's just trying to get the greatest, the great, the best shot for his team. Ray Remogat, second guess that three-pointer with shot clock winding down, creating the turnover. Four minutes, 31 seconds remaining in the second quarter. San Beda Red Lions now with a possession. Kyle Hamora against Abandiano. Son Kuya lines up for three. No good. Remogat, forward pass to Abandiano. Back to Remogat, three-point attempt. It's good for Ray. Remogat to make it 39 to 16, 23 point lead. Four minutes remaining in the second quarter. Hamora uses that screen. Cross court. Agala. No good, but there will be a foul called. Uh, no basket on that possession. Maynard Sonkuya. UP Fighting Maroons calling a timeout. Three minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter. They're still up 39 to 16. We'll be back after this timeout. Here's a warm hello from Eastern Communications. We're here to present a refreshing point of view that when it comes to delivering business communication solutions, it's time to bring back the human connection because it's just as important as the technology. Eastern Communications is business made personal. It means getting intimate with our clients' needs so we can provide thoughtful solutions to help them achieve their goals. That's why we are Madaling Kausap, May Malasakit. We are Maalam at Maaasahan. We are Eastern Communications. We're back here at the Enderon College's gym. Coach Chris King de la Cruz together with Coach Russell Ripon bringing you the action here in the opening game of the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup between the UP Fighting Maroons and the San Beda Red Lions. Miscommunication there for the Maroons, but... They get the ball back, and Yiguez blocked from behind by Torres. But he will be fouled, and he will have a trip on the line. Well, I think he was really determined to uh, to get that layup. And you know, a lot of what happens in the paint, the, 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 the player that has uh, more of a nose for the ball and, and is going to be willing to put in the effort, they usually are the ones that... Um, that benefits, so you got to give it to uh, number 33, Alter, for being aggressive in that in that uh, opportunity. Correct myself. That was Sean Alter taking the free throws, made one or two on that trip. Three minutes, 19 seconds remaining. Said Tulle 
gives it to Tagala. 10 seconds to shoot. Sean Alzer contesting that possession. Good hustle play there by Sean Alzer giving the ball possession back to the UP Fighting Maroons with 3 minutes 11 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Remogat against Kyle Hamora. Good shuffle of players here for Coach Goldwyn, Coach uh, Russell. We have seen 14 players playing at this point. Yes, I, I think that they have a great approach to this game. You know, they're allowing uh, their, uh, their rotation players and guys on the bench to get, uh, to get into a rhythm, to get time on the floor. Uh, this is how you learn. You learn through game situations, so it's, uh, I think it's a great approach in terms of how they're uh, using and utilizing the players they have today. And on the part of the San Beda Red Lions, as I've said earlier in their pregame, these team are composed of upstarts, prospects, which Coach Andre Santos and the rest of the coaching staff of San Beda would want to expose and play more minutes, get some experience against this high-caliber UP team Again, learning process also for the San Beda Red Lions as they have now possession Kyle Hamora. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining. That Tagala. hard hedge, look at that. Again, it, it, it's paying dividends for the UP defense. Good play there, defensive play for UP. And which Coach Andres Santos uh, has not yet more or less find a cure for that. Uh, hard show on that uh, screen play for for uh, UP. Ten seconds to shoot. Hawkins, nowhere to go. Sean Alter all over him. Five seconds. Turnover. San Beda. Ball possession will go back to the hands of UP Fighting Maroons. UP unforgiving in that defensive sequence coach Russell. absolutely and you can hear the up fans are loving the effort on defense uh san beta has to find a way to uh counter the hard hedge uh try to re reset the ball handler so that way they can find the open the open gap to, to drive and penetrate sean alter doing damage inside his third point of the game to make it 44 to 16 for UP, one minute, 45 seconds remaining in the half. There will be a foul against uh, Seven Gagare, his second personal foul. Both teams now in the penalty. Sedetulia will earn a trip on the line. You know what I also appreciate about UP's defense is the fact that they're actually in a gap denial defense, one pass away from the ball. So uh, the ball handler from San Beda, you know, he tries to attack the ball screen, can't do it, and then he can't, it's harder to find a, a, a pass out because UP is denying that pass, that uh, exit pass. So, you know, this on multiple levels, this defense is really playing strong today. As if all bases are covered for UP, nice defensive job, which is why they're up 44 to 18. They're doing it defensively. Yes. Pressure defense now for San Beda as Hamora bothering Abadiano at the backcourt. Iniguez gives it to Sean Alter inside. Kicks it out to Abadiano for three. Another three-pointer for Jerry Abadiano stretches this lead 47 to 18 for the UP Fighting Maroons. One minute, 11 seconds remaining in the first half of this opening game. Hawkins against Sean Alzer. Three-point attempt good for Joshua Tagala. 47 to 21 now for UP. Ray Remoga step back three is no good. But there's a foul inside in that rebound play. I, I, as I have mentioned earlier, there's no box outing happening inside which is why there are so many fouls being called here, Coach Russell. Yes, you know, I, 
you're absolutely right. When you're looking at uh, rebounding situation, a lot of guys ball watch, and so they're not expecting their guy to get the ball. So when their their matchup gets the ball, they're only left with a foul or trying to create a turnover, and that often results in you know uh, uh, advantage for uh, the offense. Tough break here for San as Hawkins misses that first and the second free throw, but said Etulie went for that offensive rebound, 10 seconds to shoot. Now for San Beda, Kyle Hamora gives it to Zet Etulie. Up and under, left-handed shot is no good. Seven Gagate secures the rebound for UP. Abadiano creating now, uses that Gagate screen. Gives it to Iniguez, corner three is good. 50 to 21, 29 point lead now. Enjoyed by the Fighting Maroons, last 14 seconds remaining in the second quarter. 11, said Etulie, being bothered by Gagate. Gives it to Hamora. Hamora lines up for three, no good. Remogat throws the ball, and that would be it for the first half of action. UP Fighting Maroons up against Sun Bella Red Lions, 50 to 21. An exciting game here to open up the hostilities for the Pinoy Liga Cup Collegiate Cup Season 3. We'll be back after the halftime break. Managing a business becomes easier when you have the right set of tools for your business. And as the premier telecommunication company in the Philippines, you can rest assured that we can provide you with world-class and innovative tech solutions for your company. Because every business needs a strong connection. So you can get the service you need while focusing on what matters the most. Like acing that presentation with no lag with Eastern IDS, a dedicated business-grade internet tailor fit with high speeds and zero lag. With a company-owned bandwidth, you can have a strong and private connection that can give your business that much-needed boost. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Or to handle your processing, storage, and networking needs with Eastern Cloud, 
which has a customized cloud platform that's fully scalable and flexible without limits. Oh, that's not any files. They're all in the cloud, sir. Good job. And by staying connected and protected with Eastern Cybersecurity, which helps keep your business safe from online threats. So why spend time waiting when you can spend it on building and managing your business? Let's make business more personal and achieve success together with the connection that knows you best. After all, that's why we are Madaling Kausap, May Malasakit, Maalam at Maaasahan. We are Eastern Communications. By the blazer. We're at the half, UP up big 50 to 21 at this point. And we have here the España legend, Coach Christian Luanzon, together with our CJ Ang, CJ. Thank you, Chris. Mga kaliga, kasama ko ngayon ang assistant coach ng UP Fighting Maroons, Coach Chris Luanzon. Coach Chris, excitement is at a high most especially that your old reliables will now be playing with your new recruits. 
in a preview of your lineup for the upcoming UAP season, how are your preparations, most especially this is your first tournament together? Well, at this point of the, the year, no, it's so important for us that uh, yung, yung whether from, from the veterans or, or the holdovers, may impart no, yung kultura na gusto namin, especially sa mga bago. And, you know, tournaments like this dito sa Pinoy Liga, it, it gives us that chance no, not only to succeed, but also to see of the things that we could clean up, the, thi the things that we could improve on. So, napaka-importante nun para sa team namin as we prepare for this year. Coach, talking about this game, your starters started slow, but your bench gave your squad the much-needed kickstart. How big will your bench be for your preparation this year? Well, tulad ng sinasabi ni Coach Gold lagi, you know, uh, our team from the first guy to the last guy are capable of playing. That's why kinuha namin sila. So it's very important for the guys playing inside not to conserve their energy on both ends because uh, knowing that you know they have reliable teammates to come inside and give the same intensity, the same energy, and the same uh, execution. Excuse me. So napaka importante no na uh, as we continue to build uh, this year. Coach Chris, meron po ba kayong gustong batiin at pasalamatan? Uh, sa mga UP fans, uh, maraming salamat sa tuloy-tuloy na pagsuporta nyo regardless of what time of the year it is and we are uh, always grateful. Thank you so much, Coach. Back to you, Chris. Thank you very much, CJ and Coach Christian Duanson for that interview. And Coach Russell, UP is looking good, 50 to 21, 29 point lead. Let's go by the numbers on why UP is holding this huge lead into this halftime. Well, you know, you look at the stats and the, the numbers tell a, a story uh, that indicates UP is just taking some great shots. Uh, they have a 14 to four assist edge. Um, in terms of field goals made, they are doubling San Beda, 16 to eight. And uh, this is for me unheard of. I've never seen a, a team shoot 72% from the three point line uh, in the first half. I mean, they're, it's, they're eight for 11. So, uh, you know, all of those point to uh, a, a team that's really in rhythm and getting great shots and playing together. Uh, one other thing too, I think it's important to, to point to in terms of the defensive, uh, defensive uh, strength is that there's a seven to one steal uh, ratio from UP to San Beda. It just shows that they have active hands. They're in the lanes. They are forcing, uh, they're forcing the opposing team into tough situations to make a decision about where the ball goes next. And then, you know, that, those will all line up for, uh, for a lead like this at this point. As the saying goes, numbers don't lie and really, San Beda must be able to crack on those uh, holes, fill those holes. Alex Teruel uh, making the three-point shot for San Beda to open their scoring for the second half. Yupi with this lineup. Briones missing that three. Gani Stevens last touch on that rebound play. Good lineup here for UP. Lebron, Francis Lopez, Kagulangan, Luel Briones, Gani Stevens, and Raylan Torres. Coach Goldwyn has the luxury of really mixing it up in terms of uh, his rotation. Like I said before, it's an embarrassment of riches in terms of this the, the, the talent level, skill level, and the depth of the UP team that allows him to put a lineup on the floor despite uh, substitutions that uh, can be really effective on both ends. Defensively, the hard hedge, they continue to play uh, strong defense and they're in the passing lanes getting deflections, resulting in a 24 second shot clock violation. So that's just, uh, that's just really, really strong, solid basketball. Again, the defense of uh, UB being the juggernaut there denying San Beda to create in that possession, forcing them to commit a shot clock violation. Seven minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Francis Lopez 
gives it to Gani Stevens. J.D. Kagulangan, extra pass to Stevens inside. Turn around, but he will be called for the traveling violation. Gani Stevens being surprised there with that Kagulangan pass inside. Wasn't ready to receive that pass, coach. I, I think the San Beda defense made an adjustment and they really are trying to defend without fouling in the post. That probably caused the, uh, the, the travel, the mishandling of the ball in the post by Stevens. No good there on that attempt for the Red Lions. Francis Lopez starts the fast break. Raylan Torres gives it to Lowell Briones Jr. Stevens inside. No contest there as he makes it 52 to 24 for six minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the third quarter. That was a great pass. His eyes were up and he saw, uh, he saw his teammate right there by the basket. Another assist. There's an offensive foul, Cyrus Mina, San Beda Red Lions. J.D. Kagulangan holding on to his face must have been poked on the eye. Possession back at the hands of UP, Lebron Lopez against Etulia. Drives strong using his left. Briones cutting in the middle. No good. Etulia secures the board for the Red Lions. UP is running some great action. They're getting, uh, they're running uh, flex screens and pin downs to get curls of the basket. Uh, they'll, you know, they, they're making a lot more than they're missing. Cross court now, Raylan Torres for the corner three to make it 55 to 24. Still the outside shooting of UP is their main weapon in this game. Zedetulie finding no one. Corner. Well. That corner three is the most dangerous shot in uh, basketball right now, I think. That's why so many defenses really try to uh, prohibit and uh, deter the ball going to the corner. Lucky break here for San Bedas. Shot clock was winding down. Foul committed here by UP. They have the chance to reset their offense. Again, another foul committed by Francis Lopez. First personal foul against Francis Lopez. Three team fouls now for the Fighting Maroons early in this third quarter. Alioso having problems against Kagulangan and JD, good defense against Alje Alioso, forcing the point guard of San Beda to commit that traveling violation. You know, the, the pressure has been constant the entire game. They haven't really changed their strategy. They are going to be in your bubble and going to force you to make a bad decision with the ball. And it's been, it's resulted in this 21 point lead. Turnovers piling up now for San Bedas. Francis Lopez goes to his left. Raylan Torres against Cyrus Mina goes to his left. Pull up jumper from mid range is good for Raylan Torres, 57 to 24 now. 33-point lead for UP, Kyle Hamora. High looping shot is good. And San Beda intercepting that pass. Hawkins gives it to Maynard Sonkuya. Great defense and transition. They're playing a five-on-five -five game now. Hawkins. Which results in a turnover. Turnover, Lopez zigzags and finds the goal Francis Lopez scoring the transition attack to make it 59 to 26 33 point lead again for UP Hawkins against Gani Stevens back to Hamora uses his left hand Hawkins was there for the cleanup job that might be their best offense at this point is getting a good shot and then having the ability to offensive rebound and, and get the put back. JD pulls up, no good. Gani Stevens tap it for UP. Second serving here, 10 seconds to shoot. Lovell Briones inside to Gani Stevens and Gani Stevens will be fouled. 
Coach, uh, we spoke to Coach Andre Santos earlier, and uh, he said that this is more or less a test of character and skills for their upstarts and prospects because uh, speaking, let's say, of their bigs, uh, their league, the NCAA, doesn't allow foreign student athletes to play. So playing in this kind of lead is more or less helpful for them. Well, I think you have to try to use these as teachable moments. Uh, regardless of the competition you're going to play against, there's always going to be, be a team that's going to be bigger than you. They might have more physical ability and strength. So a lot of what happens in basketball is the teams that win or are successful are the ones that are able to adjust and adjust when uh, when needed. So it'll be a it'll be a challenge for the uh, for the San Beta for the Red Lions to be able to find ways to adjust. Um, is there a, is there a way to defend where there's you know they don't have to worry about the post entry? So that will be their that will be their uh, their task the remaining uh, you know quarter uh, and a half to try to figure that out. We have a timeout here by the San Beda Red Lions. Three minutes, seven seconds remaining in the third. 62 to 28. UP up. We'll be right back. And we're back here, third quarter of action. Let's take a look at uh, the lineup of the San Beda Red Lions being paraded here. The Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup Season 3. Cal Hamora, Cody de Baculangan, Al J. Alioso, Richie Kalimag, Tonichi Conde, Penny Stasio, Jel Lopez, Cyrus Mina, Ming Lesiones, Mix Pascual, among others. And we're going to shout out some of our friends. From the Red Lions then, Attorney Ruel Castro, Coach Jude Roque, the team manager of the Red Lions, here in attendance. My brother Peter Royce Caron and also Abedan, a seven Gagare forces inside to Dodo. Second serving. Twin yep. Towers now working for Coach Goldwyn Monteverde in this lineup that he inserted midway this third quarter. Lopez erased by Udodo again Udodo but he will be called for that foul you know you look at the situation in terms of uh, the rotations and the uh, uh, the team they're able to put on the floor uh, you have three guys over over six seven in the lineup and they're sort of beefy guys they're not you know they they have some uh, some meat to their bones so again that lineup is going to force San Beda to adjust somehow they have to adjust to what's on you know and uh, you look at a situation like this the more you make the opposing team adjust to how you play you control the pace and the momentum of the game uh, the better chance you are going to uh, going to have of uh, being successful Newpy doing just that as Coach Russell explained it that is why they're up big 64 to 28 right now. Kings Leo Dodo try to find a friend. Iniguez firing from the elbow from way beyond. No good. And there's a foul in that rebound play. These upstarts of San Beda really proving their worth to the coaches that, hey, we're worthy of that uh, spot on that main lineup next year in that NCAA tournament, especially this guy, Maynard Sonkuya, which Coach Andre mentioned to, him, to us earlier. He's a st stretch big on their lineup, looking forward to bang ba bodies against the, the likes of Gagate here, 
the likes of Kingsley Ododo. Also with Zed Etulje, number 15 of Salveda. They will be the main focus of the lineup here of Coach Andre Santos in this game. As we go back here in action, Kingsley Ododo. Pass intercepted by the Red Lions. Kyle Hamora starting the break. Lesiones now. Baseline jumper to make it 64 to 30. Coach Goldwyn Monteverde would like to talk things over. They're up. One minute 37 remaining in the third. We'll be back. Here's a warm hello from Eastern Communications. We're here to present a refreshing point of view that when it comes to delivering business communication solutions, it's time to bring back the human connection because it's just as important as the technology. Eastern Communications is business made personal. It means getting intimate with our clients' needs so we can provide thoughtful solutions to help them achieve their goals. That's why we are Madaling Kausap, May Malasakit. We are Maalam at Maaasahan. We are Eastern Communications. Back here, third quarter of action in this opening game of the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup Season 3. Coach Chris King de la Cruz bringing you the action together with Coach Russell Raipon as Jerry Abadiano continues the rampage of UP from way beyond to make this 67 to 32. One minute, 15 seconds remaining in the third. Speaking of the, the, the three-point barrage, Coach Russell, uh, that's one more or less one main weapon that UP can really use in the upcoming UAAP season. Well, I mean, you look at you look at the players are able to put on the floor. Uh, you have drivers, guys that can get, get in the paint. You have decision makers. You have guys who can shoot. And it's interestingly enough, you have big guys that can shoot. Uh, you know, th those are all matchup problems for the opposing team. Uh, you know, I was talking to my uh, son last night, and we were talking about how to establish a career uh, in the game, right? And so one of the players that I coached in high school, Brooke Lopez, when he was in high school and college in his first couple of years with Brooklyn, he was a back-to-the-basket player, right? Uh, mainly playing on the block, a uh, couple dribbles, one move, a counter move, and he scored like 10,000 points in Brooklyn doing that. But as the game evolved, he was able to reestablish himself as a different type of player uh, where he could shoot with reliability from, uh, from the perimeter. And it just opened up so many other options for him and his career. You know, now he's approaching almost 20 years in the league uh, just because he was able to make the adjustment, right? Grow and improve and find another piece or add another piece to his game. When you look at UP, that's, that's similar to what they have into the makeup of their players they have guys that can stretch the floor they have they have players that are that have size that can move their feet and they're you know they have the ability to shoot that just as a coach it just gives you so many other options as a uh, in terms of how you operate how you attack how a defense is playing you um, so I think UP is you know is positioned well going into next season uh, to really uh, take advantage of all these different types of players they have. And they will, like I said before, they, they will be able to make other teams adjust to them. And that's really sort of like the secret of coaching is how many times can you make the opposing team adjust? And if you can do that, you have a great shot of being successful. Good points there being raised by Coach Russell. Adaptability, we're we'll, we'll, we'll going to go back to that after this uh, third quarter as we have the last nine seconds of this third quarter. Maynard Suntuya missing on that free throw attempt. Kyle Hamora duty foul there. They're only on their fourth team foul. 3.3 seconds remaining in the third. Terence Portea inbounding here for the UP Fighting Maroons. Abadiano, two seconds remaining. Step back 
And let's see if that shot by Jerry Abadiano from the baseline will count to close the third quarter. Let's wait for the officials for our rule. Let's see. Let's wait for the officials if they will count that shot. Looking at the replay here, together with our production team, making sure that we give you the right score. Basket will count for Jerry Abadiano to close that third quarter to make it 72 to 33. We'll be back after this break. We're back here at the Enderan Colleges Gym to bring you the action of the Pinoy Liga Nick, the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup fourth quarter of action here in our opening game between the UP Fighting Maroons against the San Beda Red Lions UP up big 72-33 Belmonte inside but he was bothered by the interior defense of San Beda forces him to commit that turnover, traveling violation against Belmonte. Let's go back, Coach, to have you, what you have mentioned earlier about adapting in, in, uh, in the game. No? Yes. Brooke Lopez was a back-to-the-basket scorer, and now he's still in the, playing the NBA 20 years on because he developed that outside shot. And far less in this UP squad, whom do you see has a, a similarity with how Brook Lopez adapted in, 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 in the NBA? Well, you look at a player maybe like Sean Alter. I think, um, you know, he has the right disposition. Uh, he has the right uh, effort level. And he has great feet. And it's just a matter of being in the gym and working on your game. Uh, I just, you can just imagine how much more effective he would be as a player if he was able to uh, operate away from the basket. You know, I, you know, to going back to Brooke, uh, when he went to, uh, to the Lakers for that year, uh, he was able to allow a, a coaching friend of mine and my son to uh, observe practice. And so at that time, it was training camp, and they were running two-a-days. So early morning, they had practice. Uh, that was the first day of training camp, so they had media day. So after three-hour practice, Brooke stayed an extra two hours to get shooting so he would shoot from seven spots around the perimeter right we had we, we had lunch and then he had a short nap and then went back to the gym early to get shots up before the second uh second round of two a day training sessions uh you know you're you're gonna have to find players with that level of dedication and commitment to in order to uh make the kind of changes or uh, adaptions to your game that are going to be effective. And that the, the more things you're able to do on the floor, the more a coach is going to put you on the floor. So, you know, for Sean and any of these other guys, you know, Ghani Stevens would be another guy that has potential. It's just a matter of can you put the reps in? Can you put the hours in? Can you, you know, can you get the reps in that's going to allow you to make substantial progress in your game? And luckily for us, Coach Chris, we're in a country that loves basketball. We're in a country that is uh, that doesn't lack in basketball That's court. Basketball is a religion here. It's a, well, it's really a part of the culture. It's a way of life. So, you know, these guys have a lot of potential. You look at Sean right now. The way he's defending, he's moving his feet. He's not, uh, you know, the game's in the fourth quarter, but he hasn't stopped playing hard. And he erased that Hamora shot or Lopez shot there. 
good defense. He has a quick first step for Sean Alter, you the know, defensive guy, and he, he shows shades of that uh, outside range as he drained one three-pointer earlier. As we see here, Kyle Hamora drilling one for San Beda to inch their way closer. 72 to 36, seven minutes, nine seconds remaining. And on the part of uh, San Beda, we have players here like Son Kuya, who Coach Andre told us it's a stretch big for them. Also, Zed Etulia, number 15, who's about to come back in. And it's more or less the skills that they must focus on because the game has already evolved. The, the, the key here is what have you to bring to the table? the extra things that you can bring. Absolutely. And so you look at like you look like players uh, like uh, like Etulia. You're you're trying to figure out as a coach and as a player how best you can utilize that stretch for ability. And so uh, the development games like this playing it, you know, they, you know the term uh, iron sharpens iron. You can only get better uh, playing against better guys. And not to say that, you know, the UP bigs are better than um, Sonkuya and Itulier. It's just they have a better, or they're at, they're, their level of understanding of the game and how to play in their system uh, is, you know, very strong. So, yes, you, you're, you're absolutely right. At this point in their development, you're looking at how do we, how can I impress upon the coach? that my skills are going to be valuable to the team, they're going to help the team be successful, and how am I making sure I'm fine-tuning those skills, that way I can get easy shots. Because right now, if you look at, you know, the score is not indicative of it uh, completely, but you look at how hard San Beda's had to um, work to get a shot off. They've had to work extremely hard. So, using a Tullier, Right? How do we get him easy shots? How, and then how do we build his confidence? Right? And these leagues like the Pinoy Liga, Collegiate Cup, would help these players build that confidence coming into their respective mother leagues, like especially San Beda for their bigs. Uh, it's, it's more or less essential for them to create that more or less reinvention of themselves, being a stretch big in that kind of league which do not allow foreign student athletes as we see here Sean Alter with that slam and jammer to the delight of this UP crowd here at the Enderon Colleges Gym 81 to 38 UP still up big Inigo Torres against Sean Alter Etulie five seconds to shoot Corner three, no good for San Beda. Torculas with the three bud. Alter again! Second slam from Ray Rebogat! 81 to 38, bringing the house down here. The ball didn't even touch the floor. It was pass, pass, and he had a dunk. That's uh, pretty impressive. Speaking to, uh, again, getting easy shots. The defense has allowed UP to get great shots. See Uncontested the, shots. See the court vision being brought here by Ray Remogat. Responsible for those two slams of Sean Alzer. And Wait. you were talking about earlier how, uh, how he, what he can bring to this UP team, and that's exactly what he can bring, the savvy, the basketball IQ, the understanding of can I get my teammates great shots? And he's been doing that. Torcolas caught there by our officials, warding off to secure his position on that rebound play. Sean Alter being lauded here by the UP crowd, giving us two highlight plays. You just gotta love the fact that both teams are still playing hard. Definitely the, the game seems in hand, but they're not stopping playing. They are battling, there's effort, 
there is attention to detail and they're sticking to the game plan. They're not going solo or going rogue. And that's, that's a testament to the coaches and the culture they've built. These players continue to play good basketball, even though, you know, uh, the circumstances are not in one team's favor. That's all, that's great. Speaking of the system and discipline, knowing Coach Goldwyn Monteverde, Strickler for rules, Strickler for, for the implementation of the system, really his players up big right now, still playing hard. So we have a foul here. There's just great effort. There's great effort being exerted by both teams. Um, you know, and like I said, it speaks well to both squads and both programs that uh, there's just no quit. They're going to keep on, you know, trying to win each possession. They're going to try to take the best shot possible. They're not taking any shortcuts. They're not taking any, like, uncalculated risks defending the ball or, or with their passes. I mean, that's how good basketball is played. UP here bringing in their full force, their coaching staff, Coach Goldwyn Monteverde, their head coach, Christian Wanson, the longtime assistant, Coach Egay Makaraya here, joining the, the UP coaching staff. Inigas coming back in here, checking in for Torculas. Seven Gagate, one of uh, the able big men here for UP. Former Lasal Green Hill stalwart. You know, you look at you look at the uh, the action the past uh, three and a half quarters or so. Uh, the free throws are the only time when we get a break. Uh, where we can sort of take our breath. Other than that, the action has been going up and down. Uh, and if you're a basketball fan, you just gotta love it. You gotta love the fact that uh, there's this good basketball being played on both sides. Both teams are being lauded here as they really are still playing hard despite of the score, regardless of the score. As we see here, Briones missing that corner three, but there is a foul against Seven Gagare against Inigo Torres. They're now in the penalty situation for the Fighting Maroons with two minutes, 34 seconds remaining in this game. Inigo Torres and uh, Seven Gagate, both formerly from La Salle Green Hills. Inigo Torres uh, trooping the line for two free throws. Basketball is a small world. I mean, uh, everybody knows each other these days. Uh, they've played with and against each other. They know each other's games. They know how each other's play. So it's, uh, you know, it really does become a matter of execution. If, you, if you're familiar with your opponents, are you going to be able to execute your game plan better than the other team? Hey, Great Torres look. Now. Great look for Miguel Iniguez. As you have said, basketball in the Philippines right now is a small world. But what's lacking, if you will agree or not, Coach Russell, is that some people say that uh, we need rivalries, not friendships here in basketball as we enter the last two minutes of this game. Uh, are rivalries gone here? That's a good question. I think that um, we as a basketball community a, a a nation full of fans i think we're we're always trying to uh understand the story of the teams we cheer for and the teams we cheer against so i have no problem personally with players being friendly with each other because i know if the real players or players that are really committed and dedicated when they step in between the lines the only thing that matters is the success of their team. So there may not be any more traditional rivalries, but I think what every fan should be looking for and happy about is that good basketball is being played. So like I said, you have to commend these coaching staffs uh, and these programs because they're teaching good basketball. They're teaching 
like you're looking at this situation right here, they're teaching how to stay in front of the ball. It's not all bumping guys and, and you know grabbing. I mean, they're actually teaching their players how to defend the ball without fouling. And you look at how uh, on the reverse side, on, on UP side, they, you know, they're they're teaching another way how to handle ball screens. Uh, and as a as a fan of the game, we should be looking for those kinds of things. We should be looking for great defense. We should be cheering on great defense. We should be cheering on um, players that play uh, hard, but also play smart. You know, we should be celebrating. Um, you know taking great shots, uh, beautiful basketball. You know, like, you look at the San Antonio Spurs, right? The beautiful game. That's what we need to be celebrating. And I think the more and more these coaches and programs build, you're hoping that they're, you know, they're setting the standard for, for what the fans will, will enjoy. And so, the, for me, a rivalry is important. It's great for school spirit, and it's great for com camaraderie and connection. But let's let's all cheer on great basketball. And yeah. what a game that has been played here. You have seen one great basketball game to open this Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup. And defense is not dead because UP really pounded San Beda defensively to have this 88 to 46 count. They're on their way to notching their first win here in this tournament. And they did it on the high level of defense i think you i think you hit it right on the nail they played high level defense they you know when you look at the stats from the first quarter san beta didn't shoot a lot of free throws which tells me that up did a great job of defending without fouling they they you know they executed their game plan and they didn't have to resort to anything uh other than being able to stop the ball and being able to make the defense or the offense uh, make tough decisions. And that's a, that's a winning formula. And that will do it for this game. One for the books to open this Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup Season 3. It's UP 88 against winning over the San Beda Red Lions 46. You see... The preview of uh, what UP can do with the likes of uh, Ray Remogat, Sean Alter, Gani Stevens in tow. While it's back to the drawing boards for Coach Andre Santos for his wards for the San Beda Red Lions as we now wait for both schools for the singing of their respective school hymns.
of the game, finishing with 16 points, three assists on four out of six. Three point shooting from the UP Fighting Maroons, Jerry Abagliano. So there, both teams sing their respective school hymns as UP carve out this 88 to 46 statement win you have Jerry Abadiano lynching the best player of the ball game awards 16 points one rebound three assists and he is now with our CJ Yang CJ Thank you, Chris. Mga kaliga, kasama ko ngayon ang ating Antbox Best Player of the Game, Jerry Abadiano from the UP Fighting Maroons. Jerry, this is your first game together as a team after the UAAP. How is your chemistry with the new guys and what are the things that you need to improve on, especially on the next games? Um, I think, uh, siguro yung kailangan pa namin na-improve is yung, yun, yung chemistry may sinabi mo kayo na hindi pa siya ganun ka pulido talaga kasi alam naman natin na may mga bagong players, may mga may mga bagong dating, may mga luma rin. Siyempre yung chemistry hindi naman agad-agad mabibuild yan. So baga process pa rin yan, uh, it, it takes time na, ano, na mabuild yung chemistry namin. Jerry, UP will be a marked squad in this tournament. What more can we expect from the Fighting Maroons? Uh, siguro ibibigay lang namin yung best namin. Um, no matter what happen, uh, manalo-matalo. Ang importante is 100% is bigay namin uh, para sa school, para sa team, and sa sumusuporta sa amin. And siguro, uh, thankful na kami dahil uh, andyan si Coach Gold and mga, mga veterano para i-guide yung mga luma. And then, yun, salamat lang sa, sa panalo na to. Jerry, meron ka bang gustong batiin at pasalamatan? Uh, binabati ko yung family ko, yung mga supporters na UP, yung girlfriend ko na nood, yung kapatid niya, and si Gian, yung family ko sa Ililo, yung, yung sinakosh dyan, yung papa, si mama, yung mga players niya. And then, syempre, sa kay Lord na binigay sa amin yung panahal at maraming salamat. Thank you, Jerry. Back to you, Chris. Thank you very much, CJ Ang, with our best player of the ball game, Jerry Abadiano. And that would be it for our first game. UP giving us a preview of what they can bring to the UAAP next season in this first game of the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup. UP winning 88 to 46 on behalf of Coach Russell Ripon. This is Coach Chris King de la Cruz. We'll be back for the second game between the LPU Pirates and the FEU Tamarags.
Here's a warm hello from Eastern Communications. We're here to present a refreshing point of view that when it comes to delivering business communication solutions, it's time to bring back the human connection because it's just as important as the technology. Eastern Communications is business made personal. It means getting intimate with our clients' needs so we can provide thoughtful solutions to help them achieve their goals. That's why we are Madaling Kausap, May Malasakit. We are Maalam at Maaasahan. We are Eastern Communications.